Hello and welcome back to another episode of SEC Roundup. I'm Nick Morgan, co-host of today's episode and co-founder of ICANN. And with me today is uh, the other co-founder and our co-host, Tom Zaccaro. Tom, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Nick. Good morning. Good morning. And we are pleased to be joined today by Chris Iacovella, who is the CEO of the American Securities Association. Chris, really pleased to have you. Thanks for joining. Great to be with you guys. So the reason why we uh, dragged you on to our, uh, our uh, SEC roundup here today, Chris, is to talk about a recent case that you all filed against the SEC uh, under the FOIA Act. Um, and we'll get into the details of that. But at, at a very high level, the lawsuit has to do with information regarding the SEC's uh, sweep lawsuits and settlements concerning off-channel communications with broker-dealers. Uh, obviously a big topic uh, going back a few months, maybe even a year, one that we've touched on in previous SEC roundups. So we're very interested in hearing about, um, about your lawsuit. Uh, Tom, first, maybe you can give us some context into the off-channel communications sweeps and lawsuits and the issue that we'll be talking about, which is civil penalties in SEC matters. Thank you, Nick. And yeah, Chris's lawsuit raises uh, two really important issues with the SEC, first of the off-channel communication cases, and secondly, the transparency of their penalty determinations. Um, the off-channel communications issue has been around for the last couple of years. The commission has uh, stressed through enforcement actions that regulated entities like registered investment advisors and broker-dealers uh, need to maintain all their client communications. Um, easy enough to do when those communications are through email, but when um, employees of these entities are using uh, other means to communicate, like uh, ephemeral messaging apps like WhatsApp or Signal or Telegram, um, not only are those uh, communications not going through the, the, the company's system and therefore not being preserved, but they also have, in some cases, the um, uh, aspect of being deleted after a short period of time. So the SEC has been expressing concern through enforcement actions uh, with uh, regulated entities that don't have a system in place to preserve uh, off-channel or, or communications that don't go through the firm systems. Uh, the commission over the last probably two years but a number of enforcement actions against uh, household uh, names um, and, have and have collected uh, over $3 billion in penalties. Uh, and this billion would be uh, astonishing uh, that they've collected so much. And it leads to the question of when they go after, a, again, a household name in the investment advisory business and seek a eight-figure penalty, what's the basis? What's the consistency for um, assessing such a huge fine? And is it is it necessary and um, fair and appropriate? So with that, I think I'll hand this off to Chris, who can tell us a little bit about his lawsuit, which uh, focuses on these issues. Yeah, Chris, just, um, I mean, it's not every day that somebody sues the SEC. So, you know, obviously we took note of the lawsuit um, and it, it appears that you're asking for information under the Freedom of Information Act about these sweeps and about these penalties. So why did ASA decide to bring the lawsuit and what do you hope to get out of it? That's correct. So what we did in this process in response to the SEC sweeps which were conducted mainly during the COVID period. Uh, they came after the industry and said, we wanna know how many times you had off-channel communications. We want the top 30 people at every firm. We want all their phones imaged. We wanna know exactly the number of off-channel communications that were not properly recorded during that period of time when people were running around trying to service clients and trying to keep the markets going, which as, Anybody who's watching this remembers that time period. It was very confusing uh, and people didn't exactly know what was going on, but the only way to communicate with their colleagues was to pick up the phone or to send a quick text message if they just had one or two uh, question 
for their for their colleagues and or or customers or or, or what have you. And so they conducted a sweep, which is their right to do. <clears throat> they asked for all of that information, costs anywhere between $150,000 and $250,000 per phone to be imaged and then work through each one of those images on WhatsApp, on Apple Message, on uh, Signal, going through emails, everything with counsel to determine whether something is a business activity or whether it can remain personal. Once you get through that process, you tell the SEC what it is that that uh, you know what the what the violations were and the number, and then they just come back to you and say, "Well, here's the fine you're going to have to pay." Well, what's that fine based on? Well, this is the fine you have to pay. Well, no, we just we need to understand it. some of some companies are public companies. They have a board and they large numbers associated with these fines demanded more transparency. Well. Their enforcement director doesn't want to be transparent. This is not part of his MO. His MO is let me jack up the fines as high as I can get them. Let me say that there was this many number of text messages that weren't there. We can put that in our enforcement report and we'll use it to try to get more money from Congress. So that's what he wanted to do. Yeah. And Chris, these and were so, these were oh, settled ahead. actions, right? And they were settled actions that did not involve allegations of fraud or investor harm. These are technical violations resulting in huge fines. So the, the request for transparency uh, for such huge fines doesn't seem out of bounds to me. No, it's not unreasonable to understand what your fine structure is going to be because you want 57 and a 55 100 times. Okay. And so when you ask for that transparency and you don't get it, it leads you to believe something else is going on. Uh, are they trying to pad the Treasury General account? What's going on here that the government, who we pay, has decided that our due process rights don't matter anymore, even when it comes to a fine? And so the words arbitrary and capricious continue to come up as it relates to this fine structure, which is why we sent in a FOIA request asking for specific matrices, detailed analysis, economic indicators that are associated with the factors which they themselves have suggested that they use in public speeches. Then we asked in another FOIA request, how much credit did somebody get for self-reporting? And in another request, how much credit did somebody get for having systems in place but, but uh, and trying to capture as much as they could, but because of the nature of the complication during the COVID years, it just, some things slipped through the cracks. They didn't want to answer any of these, so we sued them. And what we're hoping is that a judge will agree with our opinion that the fine process is well within their rights and well within their statutory authority, but they also need to provide some semblance of transparency to regulated entities so that they can understand why they're being fined the amounts they're being fined. You raise a great point. I think the director of enforcement recently, like in the last month, uh, again, as the SEC frequently does, um, extolled the benefits of cooperation uh, this would be an, a, you know, a perfect scenario where they could say, look, the firms that cooperated, self-reported, had systems in place, all the things that are in the seaboard factors for cooperation were present. Their penalty was X dollars or X percent less than, than a comparably situated firm that didn't do those things. Uh, that seems like a, a, a thing that uh, would be very helpful for future um, people who are considering cooperating. That's right. And all this does is it furthers this uh, reliance on the professional class attorneys in the Acela Corridor so that they can continue to have their backdoor conversations with the enforcement division and not make anybody mad over there, but then tell clients, hey, you better settle. You know, they're going to keep, they'll expand the scope of the investigation and your fine will be higher. You don't want that to happen, do you? And so, you know, there's there's a big problem here as it relates to the expansion and power of the administrative state and the collusion that it's engaged in with professional class lawyers, in especially in processes like this that where there's no transparency surrounding exactly what it is that they're doing and how they come up with some of these numbers. Well, so you filed in the uh, was it the middle district of Florida down in Miami? Uh, we're in Tampa, Florida, here in Hillsborough County. 
Gotcha. So, well, look, we want to hear more about the case. Uh, so as it as you have developments, uh, maybe we can check back in with you and see how it's going. Hopefully you can pry loose some information that'll benefit everybody about how the SEC comes up with its penalty amounts. So good luck. And uh, thank you for joining us today, Chris. Appreciate your time and uh, good luck on the case. Tom, thank you. Uh, for everybody else, we'll see you on the next SEC Roundup. Until then, goodbye. Thank you, Chris. Thank you.